On this week's episode of What's Up Weekly, we have the latest on holiday festivities making their way to Bloomington. And it's no joke that the Bloomington Brief is back in studio to bring some holiday cheer. What's Up Weekly starts now. Hello and welcome to What's Up Weekly. I'm Callie Lichter. And I'm Lucy Kellison. Finals are just around the corner and What's Up Weekly correspondent Shelby Brown took to the streets to see how students are feeling. Shelby? Hello, this is Iowa CV News reporter Shelby Brown, and I'm here to ask people how their finals week is going. Let's see what they say. How are you feeling about finals week so far? Um, I've had a lot of projects. I actually just got done with a presentation, but we're pushing through. I actually get to go home Saturday after a final, so I'm just studying and getting through it. That's exciting. <laughs> I have to finish a project, and then I have four finals, so... Oh. Not as good as Julia, but oh. it'll be fine. Um, pretty good. I think the nicer weather is definitely helping, not too stressed. They've been very long and tedious, but we're basically done, so that's exciting. We're getting through. <laughs> All of mine are on the same day, so that makes it kind of stressful. Very stressful, um, but I'm, I think we're done, so that's good. Oh, that's awesome. How's that feel to be, have them over with? Um, so good, like I feel 10 times lighter and I feel ready for next semester. Saturday marked the beginning of the annual Santa Parade provided by the Monroe Fire Protection District. Firefighters drive around different neighborhoods across Monroe County throughout the month. Santa will be making a reappearance on the 9th and also the 15th through the 17th beginning at 7 p.m. To find out if Santa will be coming to your neighborhood, visit the Monroe County Fire Protection District Facebook page for more information. Last Saturday was Bloomington's annual Winter Lights December Nights event. The festive event takes place every year in Switchyard Park as a little way to bring Christmas joy to Bloomington. The free event had a live performance from the Bloomington Chamber Singers. Many local food trucks, thousands of lights to see, and even dog treats were all included. I think it brings kind of like the community together. I mean, all the little kids get to play with the lights and um, they just get to like see Santa and all the little like candy canes hunts. And there's also a dog bone hunt, I think too. So it's just like the community all together, just like coming together and having a good time. New to this event this year, was an opportunity to support individuals in need of donating non-perishable food items to a collection bin that went to the Hoosier Hills Food Bank. Still to come on What's Up Weekly, we'll get you caught up on this week's trending topics. A podcast detailing the secret romance of former Good Morning America anchors has officially aired. We've got all the details. And Bachelor in Paradise has not been paradise for some of them. We'll get you, get you caught up on all of the Bachelor drama. Stay with us. You're watching IU Student Television. Welcome back to Trending Topics. Now, Lucy, this is like a follow-up to something that Anna and I covered last year for Trending Topics. So there were two Good Morning America hosts, Amy Roback and TJ Holmes. Now, they allegedly had an affair. Allegedly, they both say that they were separated from their respective partners at the time that they got together. But anyways, I think it was like today, yesterday, sometime this week, they launched their own podcast going into so many details about what happened. I feel like that is a very bold route to go, given the circumstance. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, if I was separated from my network hosting job and I did a tell-all podcast, I don't know if that's exactly the way that I would want to go because it was so contentious. Now, again, in this podcast, they both are just like, yes, we were separated from their partners, and they're like, we wouldn't change a thing. We're mm -hmm. the love of our lives now. Everything is totally fine. Now, simultaneously, as this podcast is launched, um, the respective partners of Roback and Holmes have gotten together. They're dating now. Oh my goodness. I know. Isn't that nuts? Oh, uh, I don't even I don't even know what to respond to that. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know, everything about their relationship, the starts of it is very contentious, but at least it seems that all parties are happy in the end. They say love hits you when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. And speaking of love, 
Lots of Bachelor uh, has been in the news, whether it's like old clips from Bachelor in Paradise from October, which I'll get into. But currently, the Golden Bachelor just ended with the 72-year-old Gary mm -hmm. Turner, who's actually from Indiana. But he just uh, got engaged to Teresa. He gave his final rose away. Oh, yeah. But apparently some ex-relationships are coming out where they're claiming that his backstory didn't really have all the details. And apparently the, the sweetheart Gary might not be who we expect him to be. Really? He seems so sweet on air. I've only seen a couple of episodes and like clips on TikTok, but mm -hmm. he seems super nice. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for his clips on TikTok, um, Sam Jeffers, her, all of her clips are starting to reappear from Bachelor in Paradise. Okay. Um, Sam was a little bit um, out of whack. Okay. When she first went on Bachelor in Paradise, she was a little bit constipated. And the show decided to do a whole episode about her um, quote unquote, poo baby. <laughs> and after 10 days, they had to bring her to the hospital to deliver. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> she was removed from The Bachelor in Paradise. No way, they just completely let her go? Yes, and she even had a love interest, which apparently they're starting to turn into soulmates. But okay. I hope that and her personal problems all work themselves out. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> News Entertainment Correspondents Alex Klazowski and Logan Bott are in studio, guys. Hello and welcome back to Bloomington Brief. I'm Alex Klazowski. And I'm Logan Bott. To celebrate this holiday season, I thought what better way than to share gifts. So Alex, I got you the one thing that you've been asking for. Is that tickets to the Eminem Fortnite concert? It is a therapy voucher. Oh, nice. Uh Thanks, Logan. Oh, it's even from you? Yeah, uh, no problem. I'm the therapist as well. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I can't wait for that. Um, Logan, I got you something. Uh, close your eyes. It's an advent calendar. Whoa, look at that. And I, I know you hate surprises, so I opened up all these little boxes for you, and oh. there was like candy inside, so I, I ate that as well. Um, but you can keep track of the days with this now. Um, cool. Only for December. Yeah, wow. Just what I wanted. And not the whole month. Yeah. <laughs> but We should probably get to the news jokes now, right? Yeah, that's okay. probably, probably a good yeah. idea. <laughs> a lion was caught wander wandering the streets in Italy after escaping from the circus, scaring pedestrians and causing mayhem. This seems like a weird way to advertise a new Madagascar movie. Indiana football coach Tom Allen has been fired from his job effective immediately. Hopefully this is good news for him so he can go back to his old work voicing an animated toy space ranger like Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> to play on words. <laughs> Iceland declared a state of emergency over a volcanic eruption threat. It's probably best to ignore the situation as Iceland is just looking for attention. Yeah, they don't do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about Iceland. A volcano in Iceland? Yeah. Well, a stolen Dunkin' Donuts truck led to a donut shortage amongst towns. Finally, a crime the police will take seriously. <laughs> <laughs> a Pennsylvania man is being arrested after trying to break into a police station to retrieve his seized drugs. Unsure why putting him back in jail would be the right answer since his drugs are there. So his drugs are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where he tried to break into. <laughs> Finally, Riz has been named Oxford's Word of the Year, which is good news for me since a photo appears next to the definition of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hope those brought a big holiday smile to everybody. And since I graduate this December, thanks for dealing with my jokes and thanks for the What's Up Weekly team. Enjoy the holidays, everyone. <laughs> and we thank you for making the Bloomington Brief such a staple part of the What's Up Weekly show. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, What's Up Weekly correspondent Ashley Voss is in studio to give us the latest on the Light the Nights at the IMU. Stay with us. Who's your news source? Wednesdays on IUS TV. What's Up Weekly correspondent Ashley Voss is in studio to give us the latest on Bloomington's Light the Night. Ashley? Thanks guys. Indiana University's annual lighting of the IMU candles took place this Thursday evening. I got the chance to be there and get in on some of the holiday festivities. Take a look. Three, two, one. Woo! Light the Night is a free event that kicks off the holiday season with a market including 15 vendors, an ice rink, and performances by Resting Pitch Face and the Crimsonettes. With this being at the end of the semester, um, it's you know nearing finals week, but this gives people a time to step away um, from that and just have fun with their friends um, and not have to think about the impending doom of finals week. Um, and then also a little reminder that the holidays are on their way and we all get to go home and experience that with our family and our community. 
The end of the semester marks the start of the holiday season, symbolized by the candles. Light the Night embodies that holiday spirit, bringing both the IU and Bloomington communities together. Because it's not just a student event, um, even though that's what it's for and who it's for, we also embrace the community that likes to come celebrate with us. Being a business owner at 22, it's kind of hard to have a social life, so being able to engage with uh, kids that are our age, it's like the best, even if it's just for two hours. No matter what holiday students are celebrating this winter, Light the Night gave them an opportunity to celebrate together. We have such a diverse um, group of students here at IU, and so being able to just have a holiday celebration for everyone is super important um, that we can all come together um, and, you know, celebrate for one thing. I am far away from home right now. I don't go home for Christmas. And I feel like the idea of having this event is really nice, especially when it's the start of December because it just kind of puts everyone in the spirit and it's amazing. The candles will remain lit until the new year. For IUS TV, I'm Ashley Voss. Those candles made me realize that the new year is closer than we realize, but I need to get through my finals before I can think of a resolution. Lucy and Callie, back to you guys. Thanks, Ashley. And that's what's up this week. Tune in next week for more local and entertainment news. Be sure to follow us on social media. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUS TV News. What's up weekly? I'm Lucy Kellison. And I'm Callie Lichter. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next year.